Kazakhstan's Bitcoin blackout. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee. I thought we'd talk about this article, which is well discussing the blackout that occurred in Kazakhstan due to Bitcoin. And well, this isn't the only reason Kazakhstan is in the news. Right now we can see they've got unrest. Russia is sending troops in. Kazakhstan, your troops ordered to fire without warning. So it's getting pretty messy there. And for those of you that don't know, this is Kazakhstan here, next door to Mongolia. Do they have a connecting border? No, they don't, not quite. But, you know, there you go, south of Russia and north of uh, Uzbekistan. Now, let's have a look at just the economy of Kazakhstan. Now, the economic complexity is 78th in the world. We're 79th, everyone. Kazakhstan has a more complex economy than Australia. Okay, just keep that in mind. So if, if what you're hearing here about Bitcoin causing blackouts and power issues across the country, thinking it can't happen here in Australia or the, the government may not ban it here in Australia, hey, we've got, a, we've got our own crazy greenies that want to push us all to renewables. What do you think that will do for that wasteful Bitcoin mining or crypto mining that's going on? Anyway, so the economic complexity is negative... 0.14. Their exports are 60.3 billion and the imports are 41 billion. Their per capita exports are $3,226 or $3,260, sorry. And the imports are 2,210. Their biggest export is crude petroleum. And where's that going? China? No, Italy. Italy there. China is well, a bit further down. So Italy, Netherlands, and France. So there you go, guys. It gives you kind of a bit of a, a understanding of at least the economy of Kazakhstan. And just for reference, you can see here, I mean, we're a significantly larger economy just with scale and per, per uh, person, per capita. But the complexity, guys, we're probably at the same level. I guess our coal briquettes aren't as complex as their refined uh, crude petroleum. So let's have a look at this article, which is discussing Bitcoin. But before we do, I almost forgot, since we're discussing crypto, we have to always look at the current crypto prices as I'm recording it. We're at $41,949 for Bitcoin. Ethereum is at $3,200 and change. Tether's still at a buck. And we can see a lot of red. Guys, there's a lot of red here. Everything. Well, what's that's a big move. There you go. Well, there you go. A lot of stuff is is bleeding right now in the crypto world. So let's have a look at this. The world's second largest Bitcoin mining hub been shut down after massive unrest gripped the Central Asian country of Kazakhstan. A fifth of the world's Bitcoin mining has been knocked out as massive unrest grips the country. The Central Asian country accounts for about 18% of the world's Bitcoin mining operations, the bulk of which was shut down after extremely violent protests erupted in the former Soviet nation. The creation of Bitcoin, known as mining, is incredibly energy intensive and is impossible without the internet. Violent protests across Kazakhstan were triggered by surging fuel prices and turned into more general protests against the government. President Kasmid Jomat Tokyev ordered the nation's telecom provider to stop internet service on Wednesday, according to CNBC. That led to an immediate internet blackout. The global hash rate, measuring how many miners are involved in managing the network, fell by 14% from Tuesday to Thursday, according to data from mining services BTC.com. The price of Bitcoin has since dropped to its lowest level since September. The cryptocurrency has slid more than 10% since the start of the year. It's worth 41.553 at 10 a.m. Saturday. The huge fall from its all-time high of 69,000. Kazakhstan became the world's second largest center for Bitcoin mining last year. The United States is number one. China was once the global powerhouse of Bitcoin mining, but the country banned it last year. See, this is what we're seeing happening. Countries are banning Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, everyone. They want to have control of their, over their financial system. And I know some of the purists will think they can never ban the algorithm. Yeah, but they can make it so difficult for normal people to use it. It will turn will simply turn into a fringe thing. That caused Bitcoin mine, mining to relocate to Kazakhstan in search of cheap energy. 
Bitcoin mining is estimated to use 91 terawatt hours of electricity per year, analysis from the New York Times shows. That's more than what is used in Finland, a nation of about 5.5 million people. And I know people will make other comparisons to other things, but what actual use is it? What's that achieving? Other than the, the monetary value of the Bitcoin, that's not really solving any problems of any use, is it? We'll have to see. Just, just wait till the environmentalists get frustrated with it. The European country of Kosovo banned Bitcoin mining this week because of the large amount of energy the process needs is crippling the electricity grid and contributing to blackouts. The government of the Balkan state of Kosovo has said security services will find those who continue to mine cryptocurrency and prosecute them. So Kazakhstan slides into chaos. Kazakhstan's president on Friday rejected calls for talks with protesters after days of unprecedented unrest, vowing to destroy armed bandits and authorize his forces to shoot to kill without warning. Now, here's the thing, guys. We're seeing hashtags like on Twitter, like Australia is lost and all this stuff. Okay? This is what happens when a country is sliding into chaos, when there's an authoritarian regime. They're shooting to kill people. We haven't reached that level here. We're far from that level here. Okay, so you've, you've got to look at these things in context. In a hardline address to the nation, the president also gave special thanks to Russian President Vladimir Putin after a Moscow-led military alliance sent troops to Kazakhstan to help quell the unrest. Security forces had blocked off strategic areas of Almaty, the country's largest city and epicenter of the recent violence and were firing into the air if anyone approached, an AFP correspondent said. Elsewhere, the city was like a ghost town, with banks, supermarkets, and restaurants closed. The few small shops still open were fast running out of food. Mr. Tokiev said order had mostly been restored across the country after protests this week over fuel price prices escalated into widespread violence. Terrorists continue to damage property and use weapons against civilians. I've given the order to law enforcement to shoot to kill without warning, he said in his third televised address this week. He ridiculed calls from aboard for negotiations as nonsense. We're dealing with armed and trained bandits, both local and foreign, with bandits and terrorists. So they must be destroyed. This will be done shortly. So the airport is closed. Long seen as one of the most stable of the ex-Soviet republics of Central Asia, Energy-rich Kazakhstan is facing its biggest crisis in decades. The violence erupted late Tuesday when police fired tear gas and stun grenades at a thousand-strong protest in Almaty. The next day, protesters stormed government buildings, including the city administration headquarters and residential uh, and presidential residence, setting them ablaze. The interior, interior ministry said 26 armed citizens had been killed in the unrest. It said 18 security officers had been killed and more than 740 wounded and more than 3,800 people detained. The numbers could not be independently verified and there was no official information about casualties among civilian bystanders. The full picture of the chaos has been unclear with widespread disruptions to communications including mobile phone signals and hour-long internet shutdowns. Most flights into the country have been cancelled and Russian news agencies quoted Almaty airport officials saying it would be close close to all but military flights until Sunday. Western countries have called for restraint on all sides and respect for people's rights to peacefully protest. China's President Xi Jinping, however, praised Tokyo for taking strong measures. There you go. Let's wait and see what the ABC have to say about it. So, unrest in Kazakhstan, everyone. And one aspect of it is the blackouts to Bitcoin and having a significant impact on that network. There you go, guys. What do you reckon? Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this one and check out this last video about, well, questioning is Bitcoin heading for their own dot-com style crash? Take care and I'll see you all in the next episode of Heiser Says. Bye for now. Thank you.